What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back. We got Pat Downey here on the show. He's going to be making his pro debut versus uh, Pat, excuse me, where'd it go here? Jeff Souter at Bellator 284 coming up here on Friday, August 12th, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, start time, 6 p.m. Eastern for the prelims, 9 p.m. Eastern for the main card. What is on showtime, of course? What's going on, Pat Downey? How you guys doing, man? Just finishing up some um, some cardio. Had some grappling rounds this morning at Fight Sports. Walked the dog. A nice, nice Tuesday here in South Florida. What kind of dog you got? I got a purebred blue nose named Mojo. Nice. nice. All right. What's his age? Yeah, it'll be two, uh, September 24th. Does he got your personality? Does he run the neighborhood? Or, you know. Oh yeah, he 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 a little street dog. Nah, he's he's a good boy. <laughs> he, he definitely got the energy in him though. He definitely he definitely he definitely my dog. <laughs> I saw uh, an interview we did. Nolan King, our colleague, he caught up with you uh, a few months back. Between that and just looking you up, you know the word controversial, wild man. That seems to somehow pop up, you know, when you're reading about you. Do you embrace that, or is that something like where? You know, now that you're moving on to a new sport, maybe you're gonna have a, a new label. Um, yeah, man, that that's that's just opinions, though. You know, I don't feel that way about me, and um, I'm sure people that know me, like my family and my but my friends and stuff, people that know me, you know, who I care about, I don't think they they feel that way about me. And if they do, then maybe that is who I am, and I'm fine with that too. But I mean, man, I'm not trying to be anything or pretend to be something i'm not i'm just me you know um i yeah. don't really too much uh, value on other people's opinions because honestly man if i would have i wouldn't have made it this far as i have and you know i kind of was always like the black sheep in the wrestling family in the whole community you know and i've kind of been almost ostracized if you will or outcasted because you know i got i got to the highest level in the sport and then they're kind of like you know they're like oh this isn't who we want representing our uh the, you know usa wrestling and so i'm always going to have my uh feelings towards the governing body or like the ncaa or like you know these other people that didn't uh you know that they kind of kicked me out of the party like i wanted to be there and then they're like no nah, we don't want you here and then i was kind of hanging around somewhere where i'm not wanted for too long so it was like you know this fighting thing is the available and it's been an option so it's like you know it seemed to be perfect timing you know, one door open, one door closes, you know, however you look at it. I think in MMA, you'll be embraced, actually, <laughs> to tell you the truth, man. I fucking There's hope so, of... man. I, I don't, I don't want to coach. I don't want to teach. I don't want to use my degrees. I want to fight. I want. I still want to wrestle and grapple. Right. Really, I love anything one-on-one -on -one that involves combat. Um, it just excites me. Yeah, I mean, we've been covering the sport for a long time, and to be honest, uh, fight, fighters that have had, you know, either upbringing or maybe they just have that in their personality. They've been some of the biggest stars, so I think you'll fit right in. But it does bum me out that after being so successful for our country, you felt like you were kind of pushed out. Um, that you should never have that feeling, you know. Uh, uh, it's too bad that that happened. Yeah, I mean, it was a blessing in disguise, but it's uh, it's easy to say that now in hindsight when you're going through it. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? You know, I mean, I'm losing my career, my life, my housing, my insurance, my sponsors, my stipend, my ability to compete. I mean, they really made the stack the deck against me to make this Olympic team, which was a big goal of mine. And I've always had the plans. Like, I've been doing a bunch of interviews, and I told one of them, I can't keep them straight, but, uh, you know, just just getting ready for this fight week, I'm doing as Bellator PR asked me to. And uh, I had the one guy, I told the guy, I was like, I always knew I was going to fight. It was never a matter of, if I'm going to do MMA for me, it was about when I'm going to do MMA. I wanted to yeah. do it under my terms with my accolades, have a successful career, finish my master's degree. I had the, this plan and, you know, I saw this quote or like, you know, one of these fucking Instagram memes. it was like, we make plans and God laughs. So, you know, as corny or cliche as it sounds, we have a plan. And then there's this other plan that we don't know that we have. So I'm kind of, I, I can I can confidently say I'm I'm back on my purpose, you know. But there was a there was a little weird transitional 
stage there. I didn't know if I was fucking coming or going or where, you know what I mean? I didn't know what was going on. My life was like kind of up in a blender. I moved three times this past year. Then my grandfather died. I crashed my car. A couple near-death wow. accidents back in Baltimore with some personal shit I'd rather not get into. But it's been a hell of a past two years since hitting the, the what some would call my peak, you know, the wrestling world yeah. team. I didn't lose for two years in this country, you know. But that just seems to be the nature of my life, the highs and the lows, the, the fucking, I'm on a roller coaster, it feels like, and I, and I can feel me climbing back to the top, and now once I get it, I'm, I can't lose it this time, so I got to get to the top and stay there this time. Yeah, well, like I say, you know, I don't know how far back you go with the history of our sport, but I'm telling you, man, almost since day one, you know, we got Tank Abbott, obviously, and then you're in South Florida, I'm sure you've heard and read about and, and know maybe even know kimbo and masvidal and bruce leroy and the stuff they used to do you know oh, uh, that's of course why there's I the diaz there. brothers to move next to that to, i'm in that area i live i'm in little haiti living i mean this is like this is like the florida version of baltimore i love it oh, okay <laughs> yeah, so is there going right to be in. like they used to release the videos one year later is, are we going to watch a video in a year of something you did yesterday in the backyard somewhere uh, we 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 got a we got a sick sick compound out here. Actually, people get a little weird at the gyms around here. We you know speaking of there's my boy Mo there's Mojo, and then yeah man I got the whole I mean we could turn this into a training compound. I got my maces, my bags. I mean I, this is where I do all my strength and conditioning, and then the striking done at KO Zone and the grappling's at Fight Sports. I mean I'm in the hotbed of MMA. You no. Know? Yeah. Now, you also have uh, three big gyms in South Florida. Is there a specific reason why you maybe decided to forego that and do your own thing? Um, well, yeah, the, I was training at the bigger gyms as, uh, for the Olympic trials, and I just felt like I was being utilized more as a training partner for these guys as camps. Um, I'm not going to call out names and put people on blast, but, you know, like – similar American top team. I fit better in at Stanford. I like Coach Jones and Coach Hoop and those partners more. And like I said earlier, half a year ago, when my grandfather passed and I crashed my car, I was also in the transitional phase of moving. And uh, I got a spot available down here with an opportunity to train and kind of be getting paid to train and coach, and uh, which is what I'll be doing anyway. So financially, just to survive, I had to make this move down south, which is crazy because it's way more expensive to live in Miami than, you know, than anywhere else really, but, uh, that I've lived thus far. So, but the, the, the situation for me, and I, I plan on getting back up in the Sanford and, uh, I keep in touch with all those guys, my, my main training partners there, you know, I just saw Derek Brunson and I talked to Phil Hall the other day. He's down here. And Gilbert Burns is one of my main guys. And, um, you know, the, the room there at Sanford and the facilities and everything, I don't have a bad word to say about them guys. It's just, 95 traffic from Miami to uh, up up to, to Deerfield, you know, it's not around the corner. And without having transportation, I got to make do of what I do have access to, which is KOs and right down the street and then fight sports one mile away. And with that being said, I'm super confident in my partners and stuff and my strength and conditioning program with heavy metal forge and my Bulgarian bag. Like I have a good regimen. We're consistent three days at a high level, three times a day. Um, you know, I really... I really don't need to, to make that commute up there. If anything, I could have those bodies come to me with a, with another third person watching who I trust. Um, and that, and that would be fine, you know, but, but really it's just about bodies and training partners. And that's what that gym, uh, that was the most important thing they have. So I do miss it, but it's, it's not like, it's not like I'm, you know, make or break, you know, going there. It's not going to make or break me, you know? Yep. Hey Pat. So you, you talked about, wanting to do MMA for a long time. Can you kind of give us a glimpse of what's on your bucket list for MMA? Are there certain uh, things you want to accomplish, certain finishes that you, you've always uh, envisioned yourself having? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've never understood why people aren't suplexing people out of the cage. With the amplitude I can generate on these throws, I, could, I, I don't see why I can't just throw somebody right out of it. But – you know, um, there's also cool finishes, like, you know, a lot of chokes that I have and just learning these submissions with these uh, Brazilians, Coach uh, Wagner and Chris Cyborg. I'm getting so good at the grappling aspect. And then 
you know, I noticed that straight kickboxing or straight boxing, um, I might get outpointed. You know, I'm getting touched more than I would like to, or maybe, you know, I'm getting touched two to three times to the, you know, they're touching me twice, I'm touching them once. But when I when I have the ability to do MMA and they have to respect the takedown and, and my feints and my fakes, I see how much better my striking uh, gets. And I'm like, damn, I'm actually, I actually feel like I'm nice. Like, I'm like, damn, I'll stand up with these guys because they have to respect. They're so scared of me taking them down, holding them down and beating the shit out of them or choking them out or, you know, just... Even if I'm not, even if I just hold them down and ride them, it's so the pressure that I can, the top pressure is a, uh, it's just something that guys aren't used to dealing with. I think smaller guys are used to dealing with, but I think when you're a bigger guy like my size, but you can move like a smaller guy, I think it's overwhelming to a lot of uh, a lot of athletes my size. So I like getting that reaction out of them, taking them down, holding them down, riding them out, not trying to kill them or beat them up or finish them, but just making them tired, and then I'll let them up. And then it's time to strike, and then and then I see if they can still strike. So, so it's cool. It's cool. I love the whole game, man. The, the, it's like uh, it's like fucking chess compared to wrestling, where it was like just one dimension of the combat. So, and you know, honestly, I, I, at such a level of wrestling, I'll probably I'll probably I'll probably forget more wrestling than anybody can learn at, that I'll fight. You know what I mean? So at this level, it's like I gotta eventually. You gotta start acquiring more skills you just kind of get stagnant you know a lot of times fighters uh will fight for everything in their favor but every now and again you'll get that fighter that says i want to go into the champs i, I want to go to enemy territory have people boo me and win a title on that guy's uh terms where do you stand on that it seems like a scenario like that would be kind of fun with a guy like you yeah that's, that's pride and ego though you know i'll, I'll test the waters but Winning is all that matters to me. Um, I'll be honest with you. That that's embedded in me from my grandfather, from my father. Um, you know, my first wrestling coach, Coach Tom DeCarlo, rest in peace, Golden Ring Panthers. You know, you win by inch, win by my winners win. Uh, there's so much that's just embedded in me that just that'll that other shit that you're talking about. It's like pride, ego, and uh, winning. Winning trumps that every day. So I don't I don't know if you'll see me sitting in unnecessary dog fights just to prove a point to the fans or anybody else. You know, I'm going to win for myself to prove to myself that, uh, you know, it's MMA. It's, it's, a, it's a fight. It's not a boxing match or kickboxing. You know what I mean? We we can do that shit out in the backyard if we want to go fist fight, but I'm going <laughs> to think I'm one of the best wrestlers in the world and not going to use it. Y'all got me fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I uh I kind of agree with goes and and just like I say hearing other stuff, I can't imagine in the mean streets of Baltimore you were telling people, hey, let's go to a neutral park. I think you were whooping their asses in front of their own cribs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not picking and choosing opponents or locations now. I'm not saying that. I'll go whip his ass here or there. That doesn't change. But <laughs> you know, you get the every now and then these guys get tough and they, they get into the alley with you and they're like, hey, none of that wrestling shit now. I'm like, oh, you thought you you thought you weren't going to get slammed on this concrete? You got another thing coming, <laughs> dummy. <laughs> um, no, you know, I, I, I uh, you had to have been recruited by pro wrestling as well, right? I mean, is that even an interest? Not to sidetrack your pro MMA debut. We're going to be tuning in on Showtime. We definitely want to wish you the best, but all these sports are starting to overlap. A good friend of ours is King Mo. He's actually gone through the pro wrestling schools and stuff. He never, I think he, he actually did wrestle, but he never got on like, you know, full-time circuit. But um, he's kind of told us a little bit about it. And again, your personality just strikes me as someone that would be an excellent wrestling heel. Yeah, I was just watching Logan Paul do his thing on there, man. I'm definitely... We're like similarly built. Like I have all those athletic capabilities to build, like flipping and doing stuff like that and rocking the mic. It's definitely a cool entertainment. But um, to answer your original question, I was approached with an opportunity out of Nebraska. And one of them was to go to the West Coast and fight with Rico Ciparelli in Vegas. And then one of them was a pro wrestling route um, with the uh, – with the guy from uh, Oklahoma State, what's his name, man? Uh, oh, it's, it's, oh, it's gonna drive me nuts. But um, old Oklahoma State guy, real, real, real well-known legend, and uh, his, his, he's got wrestlers in it too. But uh, I just never took it that seriously. 
I just thought it was like a Henry team. It just wasn't for me. I, I was like, I spent all this time trying, you know, winning all American. Yeah. And I wanted okay. to get back into re- real wrestling scene. I ended up going to Iowa Central, won a Juco national title there where, where Covington and John Jones, Cain Velasquez, Phil Halls. I mean, Iowa Central is like MMAU. You guys got to, I mean, they got to do a special, like a 30 for 30 on Iowa Central and what it is about that junior college. Because, I mean, we they, they, they just breathe uh champions it's crazy at the next level yeah i've heard about that as well um all right well no. the good thing at bellator is they you know they give you great production you have this ramp to walk down at show off that personality is all i can say you know show off that personality and you're i think you're going to see a lot of fans are going to anxiously await your debut and i think they can gravitate you because uh like i say i, I just think you have that in your personality First things first, get the W, do what you got, you know, do what you got to do to get the W. This is, uh, this is, you know, the real thing. Obviously, you know that. And, and, uh, but, but at the same time, it is sports entertainment. It is prize fighting. And one good thing, believe it or not, you know, even though you had a very successful wrestling career, but obviously you came up short on some of the goals you wanted to reach. I've seen this with like Randy Couture. I've seen this with Daniel Cormier who also had, you know, those types of dreams that maybe weren't fulfilled there, but guess what? They became world champions because the drive and the hunger still carried over. So, you know, hopefully that, that can propel you as well. Yes, sir. I definitely feel that there's a, whatever you want to call it, the drive, the hunger, the chip on the shoulder, the feeling of yes. unfulfillment, the, you know, the, the, the actual ability, the opportunity I have to kind of supersede what I did in wrestling and kind of that whole organization and and uh one thing i love doing is killing haters with success you know what i mean so i know that you're asking, they'll be watching and you know they'll be seeing and i got some i got some things in store too for these next olympics too 2024 don't be surprised if you see me representing another country in paris oh okay all right well we'll anxiously await that uh thanks for the time we really appreciate it and uh, we'll talk to you soon